Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we'll continue our rheumatology playlist, and we'll talk about the small molecule inhibitors. If you are a medical student and you have heard of small molecule inhibitors, you're way ahead of the game. But hey, Metacosis, I've never heard of this. You're just normal. And normal sucks. Um, forgive me. Treatment objective for rheumatoid. Begin with the end in mind. What's the end? To decrease inflammation, decrease pain, prevent deformity, and achieve remission. You confirm the diagnosis first. You start with a DMARD right now. Should I go with like uh, easy at first? No. DMARDs right now. And then you later adjust. Why? Would like to achieve remission before it's too late. To sit and contemplate. The treatment of rheumatoid arthritis basically is medical or surgical. Medical is non-steroidals, steroidals are here with other immunosuppressants, or the DMODs, which are divided into synthetic and biological. The biological are subdivided into TNF and non-TNF. We have talked about the synthetics in detail in the previous freaking video in this playlist called Rheumatology. Where do these new small molecule inhibitors fit in? They fit in with the synthetic DMARDs. And as you know, DMARDs stand for disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. By rheumatic, we mean rheumatoid. It's a stupid name. Now, I've made a small mistake in a previous video. It's not actually a mistake. It's a misclassification. I've told you that all of these are synthetic DMARDs. Ah, uh, not true. The first half is the synthetic DMARDs. The rest of them are the immunosuppressants. And there is another typo here. I'm so sorry, folks. Uh, immunosuppressants are, do not include the tofacitinib that we'll talk about today. No, tofacitinib is a freaking synthetic DMARD. So what are the synthetic DMARDs? Sulfasalazine, methotrexate, leflunamide, hydroxychloroquine, and the small molecule inhibitor known as tofacitinib. It ends in tinib, therefore it's a kinase inhibitor. The immunosuppressants include azathioprine, cyclosporin A, cyclophosphamide, and mycophenolate mofetil. Small molecular inhibitors in one slide, and I'll say goodbye. Thank you so much. In rheumatoid, there is something called intracellular signaling. These doofuses are responsible for T-cell activation, pro-inflammatory cytokine production, and cytokine signaling. So, intracellular signaling is involved in the pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis. Therefore, if you want to treat rheumatoid arthritis, actually inhibit these freaking intracellular signals. How do you do it? By the amazing tofacitinib. It's a tinib, so it's a kinase inhibitor. What kind of kinase? It's called the Janus kinase or JAK. We have two JAKs that are inhibited by tofacitinib, JAK1 and JAK3. The old name of tofacitinib was JAK3 inhibitor. But now we discover that it actually inhibits both JAK3 and JAK1. But hey, Medicosis, how about the JAK2? JAK2 has nothing to do with rheumatoid arthritis. JAK2 is involved in the famous chronic myeloproliferative disorders. And we have talked about myeloproliferative disorders in my hematology playlist. This amazing JAK3 is part of the JAK stat pathway. Do you know any hormones that work through the JAK stat pathway? Oh yeah, I can give you many. How about the growth hormone, erythropoietin, thrombopoietin, prolactin, and some cytokines also known as immunomodulators. What is the difference between cytokines and interleukins? Interleukins are a subset of cytokines. Okay, now I get it. What are the side effects of these small molecule inhibitors? A lot. Since they inhibit intracellular signaling, they actually are inhibiting your inflammatory cells. They are inhibiting your military. So you'll get infections such as TB reactivation. By the way, this is probably due to bone marrow suppression or myelosuppression, which includes anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. Some skin allergic reactions, of course, they are small molecules, who knows what's in th this drug. And then there is increased lipid and decreased heart rate, so hyperlipidemia and bradycardia. So even though this drug is called small, the side effects are huge. If this drug is to come on your exam, it's gonna be asking about either TB reactivation or shingles, which is another infection. What is the causative organism for shingles? It's the varicella zoster virus, or VZV, which is a subtype of the herpes viruses family, or herpes viridae. 
Until the end of January, you can get 60% discount towards my antibiotics course. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com and use the promo code antibiotics60. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell and click on the join button. Follow me on all of these platforms. Please support the channel on Patreon or PayPal. Here is my email. Here is my website. Rest in peace. I'm sorry. Like, have a nice day. Be safe. Stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.